What's up, Tech Feed? Welcome back to another episode of Techno Buffalo's Driven. I'm your host, John Brenton, just the show where we talk about cars and do silly, silly things with them. Up this week, I want to talk news and the shiz that went down between the New York Times, Elon Musk, and Tesla, because there's all kinds of fists being thrown, accusations being thrown out there, and lots of stuff to talk about. This is Techno Buffalo's Driven. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you haven't been following what's happened, let me give you the short, condensed version of it. So the New York Times, in particular, one of their authors, John Broder, tried to do a drive from Washington DC to Boston utilizing Tesla's supercharger network. Don't know what they are? They're essentially they're 480 volt superchargers that use, most of them at least, use the sun and they can charge your Tesla Model S for free. Uh, to charge a regular 85 kilowatt Model S, which gives you a uh, Tesla range of 300 or an EPA 5 cycle range about 265. They say after 30 minutes you can get about 180 miles of charge. So pretty quick, certainly not as fast as a gas station, but totally free. And you could use them as many times as you want without really any danger to the battery. So pretty cool. Uh, so John Broder tried to get from DC to Boston, taking advantage of two charging stations. One in Newark, Delaware, the other one in Milford, Connecticut, about 200 miles separating the two of them. All sounds great. Figure the car's got a 265 mile actual range, 200 miles, no problem. You factor in though that he's trying to get from freaking DC to Boston in the middle of February. It is cold and that definitely affects the battery. The car has to work to keep those battery cells up so you're going to lose range. So we tried to make the drive and I'll make a long story very short. He didn't make it. Uh, and it was a really dramatic picture of his test Model S and Tesla had provided it to be tested, being flatbedded and Mr. Broder wrote a relatively scathing post that had some complimentary things in it uh, about the car and about electric cars in general. Story came out and Elon Musk immediately came out on Twitter and was like, dude, Broder, you are a liar, you are cheating, that did not happen and beyond that, I can prove that didn't happen. He said that essentially in every media car they send out, uh, the car is equipped with a 3G radio and they can track what the car is doing. They can track everything from climate control to whether or not you're driving, GPS maps and everything. So it took a few days, Elon Musk said, I'm gonna put up my information tomorrow and you'll see. And then tomorrow came, then the next day came, and then we saw all the information. What he released was a whole bunch of graphs and a really scathing report uh, directed exactly at Mr. Broder's journalistic integrity, surely the heart of any journalist. So so he said a couple interesting things. First, Mr. Broder claimed that he was maintaining proper speeds and wasn't really speeding. Uh, Elon Musk and the data suggested otherwise, that he was definitely speeding. Uh, Mr. Broder claims that he charged the car to full capacity. The data essentially says otherwise, um, that he should have charged it longer to try and get full range and should have taken advantage of charging to max range as opposed to just using part of the uh, charge on the car. It's a little technical, but you can charge it two ways, either max range or standard range, um, depending on how far you want to go. And then perhaps most scathing of all was Elon Musk said Mr. Broder drove around in circles in a parking lot for 15 minutes trying to run the battery down. And perhaps one of the most damning things that happened was he parked the car overnight. He didn't make the drive all in one day, parked it overnight and didn't plug it in even at a 110 volt to give it some charge. So of course, like your cell phone, you leave it overnight, batteries are going to drain, especially in cold conditions. And he lost a huge percentage of what that range should have been. So, you know, there are two different sides of the argument. Certainly, uh, Mr. Broder came out and said there was some evidence uh, that he couldn't defend, essentially was what he said. So whether or not there was foul play or whether or not it was intentional to undermine the electric car industry or Tesla, you know, that really is up to interpretation. But certainly, uh, Mr. Broder has some explaining to do that he tried tried to explain and follow up posts, uh, but still there are huge discrepancies in the information. Uh, I think Elon Musk would have been much better to put out the information and say, you audience, let you decide. Instead of getting super preachy about it, sort of make him look a little bit like a villain. Um, but I guess that's sort of a good lesson in general. Put the information out. If you think you're on the side of right, people use that information to sort of draw their own conclusions, as opposed to telling them what conclusions they should draw. Uh, it's been a really interesting story, and it's put Tesla squarely in the limelight. But there are real-world consequences here. Tesla stock dropped 
because of it. Uh, certainly perception of the Model S may have dropped because of it uh, as well, but should it have dropped because of it? So it was a test of the supercharger networks. Certainly anybody else that wants to drive that distance, you know, would plug their car in overnight. They would have charged up like the supercharger. They would have been able to make the drive. In fact, CNN, just a few days later, did the drive on their own, made it no problem. And this past weekend, I believe it was seven Model S owners did the same drive uh, from DC to Boston and all made it no problem as well. So the moral is, Put the superchargers closer together, put more superchargers, and it's not going to be an issue. Uh, this is a car in the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack that can get you 265 miles on a single charge, which is farther than most people ever drive in one sitting. If you're driving farther, find a place to plug in. Certainly driving an electric car as you would an internal combustion car isn't going to happen. It takes more planning. It takes longer to fill up your battery, but you can have electricity for renewable sources, and those superchargers are free, so you're not paying for gasoline. So, kinda nice. So what do you guys think about this story? It's been really fun to follow and fun to watch and see different tech sectors, the automotive sector, really butt heads uh, yet again. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Techno Buffalo's Driven. Be sure to check us out every Wednesday right here on the Tech Feed, and of course, subscribe for the latest content from your favorite tech YouTubers. I'm John Rettinger, catch you next video.